Hi, this is Rashid. Welcome to another video. And today we are going to talk about flip-flop or in other words, one bit, oops, one bit register. And hopefully I will get time to explain how we can use an enable signal and a reset signal. Uh, if you remember, uh, we had used for register, okay, we want to load the new value onto the register when we want to have a, some sort of enable. And reset is to reset zero. But anyway, since we haven't touched on flip-flop, I think it's a good idea to go into flip-flop first. But before going into flip-flop, because flip-flops are made of latches, so um, this is the latch that we where we left last time. So if you look at, um, there is a slight change. And I noticed that if, if you remember my previous video, I had inverter here, which was going outside. And in this one, I moved this inverter down. And that impacts what? So if you look at when clock is one, okay, um, when and D is one, then D is one, then this set is one. All right, set is one, yes, sir. Keep. So set is one, okay, and when clock is one and D is zero, this one is enabled or reset is one. And when set is one, Q is one. And when set is zero and reset is one, Q is zero. And we will say that most of the time we just need one output. We don't need a Q dash all the time. So you can see that I have removed here. And we can also remove it from here. To make it simple. Yeah, we, we know that. Okay, Q dash is always um, invert form of Q all right that's it so hopefully you have understood that but important thing here and that is the reason why we call this signal a clock because when clock is one we see that D is impacting Q right and when clock is zero you know there is no impact on there is no transfer of Q to output output keeps its previous value so in other words we can say that during this phase when clock is one this latch is transparent and when clock is zero latch is in blocking or you can also say opaque condition it's it's blocking d okay and blocking d and this is letting d go to the output now what we do is we represent this whole circuit with a simple block diagram okay we put clock here and D here Q is just a rectangle there. But I tell you there is another way we can do it. I mean in this, to, according to this table, in this diagram, the latch is transparent when clock is one. What if I want to make uh, this latch transparent when clock is zero? How would you do that? So, stop the video and think about it all right the answer is all we have to do is we have to put what over here okay got it and this one will make it um, and the representation is over here and this is where and if I, I I copy this truth table instead of overriding this one, okay. And what I'll do is I will make it zero and I'll make it one. Okay. Uh, so basically, I have switched. This is transparent and this is opaque. And the notation for this is this little bubble here that I put here. This will represent that, okay, there's an inverter here. 
and this inverter will be gone if I mean if I draw this around oops this is my lock of latch all right you got it so level sensitivity of the latch and then um, positive or level high all right I think this is what I would call it level high and level low and here is I have um, let's make this smaller and stick it here oops let's rub it out here now the reason there was a reason why I called this signal clock I could have called it anything a b c d and r d but it is here but a c d e because this really is sets a clock for us now we are getting into uh, storage elements and storage elements are going to store it and we have to control when they want to store it and the, the signal that we are going to use for storing single bit is actually a clock now what is a clock clock is in our uh, analog form the clock that we use is tells us a timing okay when we have to do what and it's the same thing here you know this clock is going to tell us what we are going to store when storage is critical uh, so but so here is a typical clock what happens on clock clock is a zero and then clock is one so low level this is basically a zero volt and a higher volt and zero volt is is you know but at this point and the high voltage is here so you have zero one zero one zero one and since we are on a clock it's important to say that okay the time this time is to call the time period of the clock we will get into the timing but since i do clocks i thought i tell you an inverse of time is frequency okay so the time period and frequency is how many cycles are in there let's go back that's a bit oops all right but what i want to tell you here is that if this is for our this latch this is the window of transparency because clock is is one as seen here and if let's say I'll, I'm just trying D something like this I mean D will be zero or one okay but let me do this zero and so one so our Q you know will also change so whatever D during this cycle so this half cycle during this time what had happened to d if d decide to change here or let's make maybe make sense this is a single bit so let's make it like this if if, oops, if it changes here output changes here i'm assuming right now there is zero delay from here to output but actually there will be delay through the gates okay so and if input changes at this point output change at this time but if input changes this time output will not change until it looks again in this oops until it looks again into this area and now it sees one so it will immediately change oops it will change to one you see that so during this cycle half cycle sorry this is full cycle this is transparent and this is opaque it's blocking any change and that is the critical critical thing on, on latches all right so you you understood hopefully let's look into a flip-flop a flip-flop 
as opposed to latches latches i told you they are level sensitive clock is one okay transparent clock is zero not transparent but flip flops are a little bit more strict they are edge sensitive when the edge of the clock and edge is what this clock changes i mean ideally i'm drawing here so let's try here you know nothing happens like ideal things are always a little bit delay so think go from zero to one in a little, little bit time but let's even the ideal scenario zero one so flip-flop is sensitive to this or sensitive to this when data changes right before here this change will go to output now if if data changes d i mean when i say that i mean d if d changes here this change will not go to output immediately or let's say if d changes oops here sorry here this will not go to the output it will not happen like a output follows it really was the values of you know if it's uh, there are two type of just latches there were latches there were uh, level sensitive high and then level sensitive low for flip-flops they are edge sensitive rise which is this or clock this by the way clock when the clock goes wide or low they are edge sensitive to low okay uh, so hope is clear i know flop flip flop and latches can be be tricky to understand but um stop the video go back and try to look at it again um i think i should not go into detail circuit but you must be wondering um, why we use flip flop uh, why we use this edge sensitive so one thing i can tell you which you will understand right now uh, because we haven't covered the detail topic it, it's simple um, analysis is simple in a synchronous design um, which will look more where clock running all the places and all the keep operations are shifted or stored or moved to the next stage at the rise edge of the clock or fall edge of the clock and in that is much easier um, so um, and analysis is much easier uh, latches i think maybe we go into static timing analysis we will look at some of the latch timing uh, it, it makes things tricky um, even i forget you know, most of the time i have to go back and think about latches okay how it, it all works so flip-flop and sensitive it's simple analysis uh, the other thing is our glitches i should not talk too much but you know during the level sensitive if sometime there's a little glitch here on the d output gets the d right so and this um, flip-flop this ensures that as long as we have this very small window have a valid data that will go here even if data makes fluctuation output will not fluctuate so that's a good it kind of suppresses noise there um, clock domain crossing when you are talking between multiple clocks and data is transferred on clock one and is captured on clock two and both clock one and clock two coming from completely different source then um, we can synchronize things better on the edges of the clock as opposed to levels they they give you they are better for the uh, for the um, to ensure that we are not into incorrect uh, logic value but anyway let's not think too much about just keep in mind it's much simpler easier to um, and analyze the timing so we will look into flip-flop design it just consists of a couple of latches um, I will leave it here because I think these are some important concepts. I don't want to make the video too long. So go back and uh, watch this video again 
and understand the latch functionality level low level high and the flip-flops okay and next time i will go into flip-flop construction which is made with two latches and we will look into enabled um, flip-flop and a flip-flop with a reset signal all right um, hope it was good you got something useful see you next time bye